White Waves features the work of graduate student alumni from the University of Texas at Dallas in a survey exhibition to celebrate the university's 50th anniversary. These artists employ light as one of their creative materials and continue to influence dialogues in the field through exhibitions, publications, and education. Among those chosen to represent visual arts graduate alumni in photography and related areas such as video and design are Mona Kazra, David Witherspoon, Ronaldo Thompson, Gerard Polite, Christy Nelson, Tim Kolzak, Lupita Mario Tenen, Lillian Love Kennedy, Emily Loving, Cynthia Miller, Lily Albritton, Sheila Cunningham, Eric Bays, Alan Governor, and Diane Durant. The exhibition was curated by myself, Marilyn Wallagor, director of the photography program in the School of Arts and Humanities. Lily Albritton has been documenting Virgen de Guadalupe ceremonies for over a decade in cities throughout the Southwest, as well as in Mexico. She describes her goal to, quote, challenge viewers to rethink their assumptions about religious devotion, Hispanic culture, and the idea of community, unquote. Her richly detailed images often document a combination of references to include both ancient rituals along with reminders of our contemporary present. Eric Bays explores aspects of celebrity and religion as he surrounds these silhouettes with luminous, faceted patterning. The figurative shapes represent his reinterpretations of iconic imagery from Western art, while the textures are cold from media representations. He engages in a dialogue regarding the contrast between our physical selves and the lives of celebrities as depicted through media. Sheila Cunningham often adopts architectural forms, repeating, flipping, and rotating these elements to create complex patterns that transform our perception of space. Relying upon aspects of symmetry, she digitally alters photographic source imagery to create an infinite arena of planes and forms that echo one another. Diane Durant's recreations of memories of her childhood address parental expectations and childhood ambitions, created in collaboration with her 10-year-old daughter and including many props and costumes borrowed from the 1980s, the images blur the distinction between personal histories and present realities. She engages in a process she describes as bringing, quote, the past into the present as we relive and rewrite my childhood memories, unquote. Her adoption of deadpan with the central framing of the subject and the supporting text creates a dialogue with the snapshot and family photography, further complicating the viewer's understanding of time. Alan Governor documents both individuals who endure homelessness and those who provide support. For a period of six years, he has recorded this community that gathers at the Stupot, an institution that, as he notes, provides, quote, resources for basic survival needs as well as opportunities to start a new life, unquote. He emphasizes the conditions that those living on the street encounter to make visible a continuing need in urban areas such as Dallas. Mona Kazra collaborates with performers, sound and costume designers, and composers to realize the virtual reality environment lost in a forgotten place, which she describes as, quote, a post-apocalyptic nightmare about strange encounters at a deserted block, unquote. The haunting, desolate scene is populated by odd figures, part human, part animal, festooned with elaborate headdresses and body coverings, the traverse a landscape of devastation. Lillian Love Kennedy creates a constellation with her installation comprised of illuminated lamps surrounded by crystals. She includes Polaroid photographs of herself posing with crystals in events staged for the camera to reference Marcel Duchamp's infamous urinal. 
Tim Kolzak presents images from the Veterans Project, documenting veterans from World War II to the present and the reentry to civilian life. He describes his aim as, quote, to show each participating veteran as they truly are, as a unique person whose decision to serve places them in a special category of American volunteers. He strives to include references to each service member's individual challenges, to include mental or physical injuries, while creating a portrait to convey their humanity and endurance. Often exploring imagery of the female body, Emily Loving recombines image fragments and reassembles them to reflect on what she describes as photography's ability to, quote, influence our perception, recollection, and reality, unquote. In her imagery, the break between parts of the body engages the viewer's reflection on the process of seeing. Our usual reading of the figure becomes disrupted due to this requirement to reconcile the body's dislocated physical parts. Cynthia Miller documents food preparation in the kitchen, elevating activities in the domestic sphere to comment on the role of the mother. She literally appears to be making lemonade from lemons to add another play on the juggling act of the artist and mother, who struggles to locate a balance between the various roles women perform in society. Lupita Mario Tenen continues her exploration of immigration and migrant labor as they reveal the interconnections between Texas and Mexico. In particular, she reflects on the Bracero program, active between 1942 and 1964, and comments that, quote, this program established a pattern that endures despite its official end because both economies benefit deeply from the sweat and toil of migrant labor, unquote. In her photographs, she often combines images to emphasize farm workers in the landscape, as well as the physical presence of the border itself. Christy Nelson generates a dreamlike nocturnal image where she documents herself using a scanner. The staged event emerges from darkened shadows, to suggest a narrative. She notes the potential power of dreams to transform one's life, especially if impacted by tragedy. As she states, quote, dreams might be a snapshot of a shattered existence, but they might also be instrumental in making her a survivor, unquote. Gerard Polit explores landscape by acknowledging its physical transformation by humankind rather than attempting to locate a fragment of the environment that appears to be pristine or devoid of human presence, he documents a scene that reveals what has become increasingly a more realistic view of our environment. Ronaldo Thompson's self-portrait, designed to be printed close to life-size, presents an image of himself before a mirror posed with his dog, Rumi. He adopts the selfie as a method to comment on the relationship between images and our attempts at self-definition. However, the extensive use of blur renders the subject indistinct so that it functions more like a memory than an attempt to fix identity. David Witherspoon describes his project. The works examine the industrial complex that society has transformed into and embraced, unquote. From the package series, he reflects on aspects of American consumption through his time-lapse videos of a decaying animal head decorated in red, white, and blue. He also alludes to violence in his sculptural translation into wood of a damaged metal bullet stamped with the word wound.